Hi friends. Have you ever wondered how Watchtower came up with all of those predictions that ultimately failed? Well, grab the popcorn because we are going on a wild ride. The topic of today's video is Watchtower and their shady friends. <clears throat> this video is somewhat of a follow-up to the last one that I had completed entitled Watchtower's, Watchtower Who's Channel. So anyway, let's start with a book review entitled Angels and Women as posted in the Golden Age magazine. If you see there in the boxes, it says, Pastor Russell read this book with keen interest and requested some of his friends to read it because of its striking harmony with the scriptural account of the sons of God described in the sixth chapter of Genesis. The next box says, we, all, we call attention to this book because we believe it will be interest, of interest to Bible students who are familiar with the machinations of the devil and the demons. And then lastly there it says, the book is revive, revised and published by a personal friend of Pastor Russell and one who was close to him in his work. Russell must have really loved this book because a friend of his not only read it, the old book was called, I think it was called Siola or Siora. They revised it into the new book, Angels and Women. Do you remember at the assemblies, whenever there was a new book that was published by the society, everybody was so happy, everybody clapped. And then what did we do? Everybody jumped to get in line first to buy the book. I'll bet you millions and millions of Watchtower books and pop publications were sold every year as they came out as new at the assemblies. So what did we do? We used our hard-earned money to pay for these books and then we peddled them from door to door as unpaid salesmen. Go figured, but that's a little bit of a side note. So we were very, very happy about new books that came out, and you can just imagine how the Bible students at the time flocked to scrape together $2 to buy and read this book called Angels and Women. So let's find out a little bit more about what this book is all about. Here it is. Look at the arrow there. It says, all students familiar with the Bible teaching concerning spiritism will read this book with keen interest because it shows the method employed by Satan and the wicked angels. The reviser of this book is of the opinion that the original manuscript was dictated to the woman who wrote it by one of the fallen angels who desired to return to divine favor. So the other manuscript, or the original manuscript, was dictated to the author, J.G. Smith, by demons. And Russell's friend read it and revised it and published it again. And they wanted the Bible students to read it. So be sure to watch my videos on Johannes Grieber and John 1.1 to see exactly how demonic inspiration was kind of familiar to Watchtower at that time. Angels and Women was demonically inspired and John 1.1 1, 1, in the New World Translation was taken from a demonically inspired translation of the Bible by Johannes Grieber. So anyway, this dictation of, uh, by the fallen angels is an occult practice. It's called automatic writing. And let me just show you a little screenshot from the internet explaining what automatic writing is. This is by Karen Frazier, a psychic medium. She writes, automatic writing is a form of psychic channeling and even beginners can learn to do it. 
When you engage in automatic writing, you set aside your ego wants and needs and allow spirit to move your hands to form words. That's what happened with the book Angels and Women. So psychic channeling, and we know that Watchtower claims to be God's sole channel of communication. It's just very interesting. You know, if the Bible students were truly students of the Bible, they would have known what this was because they would have read this scripture. In James 4, chapter 7, it says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Why would a true Christian want to read books about the devil or transcribed by fallen angels? Why? Resist him and he'll flee from you. There's no need to know how and why he works the way he does. Instead, scripture tells us to do this. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Let me ask you, friends, if when we were Jehovah's Witnesses, if we were thinking on these types of things, would we have been so afraid? Instead, this was what we were subjected to looking at. Friends, the elders would not hesitate to form a judicial committee for seeing R-rated movies, but Watchtower had absolutely no problem repeatedly showing pictures like this to our children. I grew up on these pictures. I remembered them vividly, and I remember how frightened I was all the time. And I'm not even gonna get into the subliminal images into these pictures, there's no need to do that. But can it get any worse? Do you remember this book, the finished, Minish, the finished Mystery? Well, the inside cover stated that it is Russell's posthumous work. Posthumous, what does that mean? Well, it means occurring, awarded, or appearing after the death of the originator. So this book, The Finished Mystery, claims to be written after Russell's death. At least that's what the book says. What really happened was different, but that's the topic of another video. But this is called necromancy. And I like to put definitions of words, especially for these long words that are not very common. And a lot of my viewers, English is not their first language, and I want to make it very clear to everybody. So necromancy means the supposed practice of communicating with the dead especially in order to predict the future. So what does the Bible say about necromancy? Let's take a look. Deuteronomy 18, it says, when you come into the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that makes his son or daughter pass through the fire or that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God will drive them out from before you. I could probably do a video on every single one of these things mentioned here in Deuteronomy 18 and show you that what Watchtower was teaching, the higher ups were actually doing. Wizard, witch, enchanter, observer of times, the whole pyramid thing, divination, <laughs> except for passing through the fire, which letting your children die, the blood issue, I, I don't know. That's, I'm going off here on a little trail. 
But anyway, let's take a glance inside the finished mystery book to page 144. It's explaining that the angel that was sounding is not the voice of the Lord that had been mentioned, but it's Watchtower. So let's read it. It says, and another angel, not the voice of the Lord mentioned in the preceding chapter, but the corporate body, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, which Pastor Russell formed to finish his work. This verse shows that though Pastor Russell has passed beyond the veil, he is still managing every feature of the harvest work. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society is the greatest corporation in the world because from the time of its organization until the now, now the Lord has used it as his channel through which to make known the glad tidings. On page 256, it says, while this plague was still in process, Moses said to Pharaoh. So basically what earlier in this page it was talking about is comparing the, the plagues in Egypt and Moses to Revelation. So it says, Moses said to Pharaoh, I will see your face again no more. So the finished mystery says, it is even so. Pastor Russell passed forever out of reach of the anti-typical Pharaoh, Satan, in the fall of 1916. But in steadfast belief that his works do follow him, we hold that he supervises by the Lord's arrangement the work yet to be done. So this book is stating that dead Russell is directing the Lord's angels for bidding, to do bidding on the earth. Well, we know it's not the true God's angels because that's not what scripture says. Scripture says it's the angels, not dead Pastor Russell. Take a look at this page here. It says, Pastor Russell dead, but speaking again. It says, also in the year 1918, when God destroys the churches wholesale and the church members by millions, it shall be that any that escape shall come to the works of Pastor Russell to learn the meaning of the downfall of Christianity. In that day shall thy mouth be opened to him which is escaped, and thou shalt speak, and be no more dumb, and I shall be a sign unto them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Pastor Russell's voice has been stilled in death, and his voice is comparatively speaking. Pastor Russell shall be a sign unto them, shall tell them the truth about the divine appointment of the trouble, as they consult his books, scattered to the number of 10 million throughout Christendom. His word shall be a sign of hope unto them, enabling them to see the bright side of the cloud and to look forward with anticipation to the glorious kingdom of God to be established. Then they shall know the Lord. Well, what Lord? It's certainly not, <coughs> excuse me, it's certainly not the Lord of the Bible. So moving on, the finished mystery, page 126, it says, have you enjoyed the, this works thus far? Are you convinced it is of the Lord prepared under his guidance? Have you carefully and prayerfully read the comments on Revelation 7? Then brace yourself for the truth that is evidently God's purpose soon to allow, listen to this, the minds of many of his little ones become an open battleground upon which the fallen angels shall be judged and the manner in which we meet the text will prove our worthiness of crowns. Well, the crowns have nothing to do with our minds being an open battleground for the fallen angels to be judged absolutely nothing at all. Crowns have to do with rewards for true believers in Christ, what they will get. True believers who've put, put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ will not be judged by their works. They'll be rewarded with crowns. And that's the topic of another video. It's a beautiful thing. Our minds are not going to be a battleground for fallen angels to be judged at all. That's just... I don't even know what to say about that. This says the base of the brain is seized as in a vice. 
Interpretations of scripture, ingenious but misleading beyond description, are projected into the mind as water might be projected through a hose. So the finished mystery tells us how the fallen angels communicates to their followers. They basically take over the brain and misinterpret scripture beyond description. Is that not what happened in Watchtower? Scripture was so misinterpreted to us. It left us fearful, guilty, and confused. And that was by design. The finished mystery tells us exactly how it was done. And it's still happening today. How else would my family agree to shun me for more than 30 years? My family members are wonderful people. They're wonderful people, yet they've shunned me for more than 30 years. This is why, this is why. This is not scriptural, friends. This is not scriptural behavior at all. You see, this is what happened to Johannes Grieber when he was interpreting John chapter 1, verse 1. Take a look at that video. His mind was taken over and scripture was misinterpreted beyond belief. The links are in the description box. So friends, do you know why Watchtower has so many failed predict predictions? Because they were misguided by demons. Demons think that they're in control. They think that they can steer world events to bring in their leader at the end of the world. But they're not in control. God's in control. Let's take a look at scripture. Psalms 2 says, why do the heathen rage and the people of that imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Guys, I love this scripture because God's in control and the leaders of the world all the people on earth, Rutherford, Russell, all the false prophets, the false teachers are doing the bidding of the fallen angels and they're predicting the end of the world, 1914, 1918, 1925, 1975. And their minions, Rutherford, Russell, Franz, Nor, all of these guys are like, this is it. It's the end of the world. Prepare yourself. They don't want the Lord to be in control when they say, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. They don't want truth. They don't want to follow Jesus Christ. But what does the Lord say? Yeah, okay, go ahead, make that prediction. You make that prediction. You believe that prediction. But I'm going to sit on my throne and I'm going to laugh and I'm going to hold you in derision because you're going to look like a fool because I'm in charge. The Lord is in charge. Jesus is in charge. Jesus, the Lord, tells when everything is going to come to fruition according to his plan. I want to add a little bit of comedy to this, okay? Take a look at this 1984 watchtower. It says on the bottom in the footnote, Regarding his misguided statements as to what we could expect in 1925, he once confessed to us at Bethel, I made an ass of myself. <laughs> of course, that was Rutherford speaking because that's what this whole article is about. He sure did, didn't he? So I want to give you some guidance from scripture, okay? Because we're going to replace these watchtower lies with truth. So let's take a look. John 17 says, and now this is, of course, Jesus praying. Jesus knows he's about to be crucified. 
not only was crucifixion a horrendous death, but Jesus also knew that it was the will of the Father to put the sins of the world on Jesus. So if crucifixion was not enough, he bore the sins of the world in the spirit world. I can't imagine what that was all about. But let's take a look what Jesus prayed for right before his crucifixion. Verse 13, and now come I to thee, as he's praying, Lord, and these things I speak in the world that they might have joy fulfilled in themselves, meaning his disciples, his followers. I have given them your word, the Bible, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that you take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. Scripture is truth. We can understand scripture. Scripture, the Bible, is all we need. But let's take a look and continue on. John 10, 28, Jesus says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So the followers of Jesus do not need to fear the fallen angels, do not need to fear the devil. As Jehovah's Witnesses, all we heard about is how powerful the devil is. Well, you know what? If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you're in the palm of his hand. Nothing can pluck us out of his hand. Can we die in this life? We'll die. But listen, there's a battle for souls going on in the spirit world. Our souls are safe if we know Christ as our Savior. 2 Thessalonians 3, 3 says, But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. The Lord will keep us from evil. We don't need to fear evil. John 17, 14, I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Listen, friends, I want to tell you something. My testimony, years ago, see, I was out of the organization for, I don't know, 15 years or so. I was shunned for 15 years, and I didn't really believe in God. I was kind of agnostic. I had turned my back on God. So I really couldn't follow him, right? I thought I was selling my soul to the devil by getting out of the Jehovah's Witnesses. So after 15 years, I wondered, why am my family not speaking to me? What's the driving force behind this religion? And I started to do research, and I immediately saw, immediately, that I was not serving God as a Jehovah's Witness. But I did research 17 hours a day for three months. And I ended up in a very dark place because I was researching all of this stuff, but it didn't make sense to me. And I was in my bed shaking with fear, shaking, shivering. Oh my gosh, I've seen, I've defined evil. Now I know what I was seeing as, or what I was, who I was serving as a Jehovah's Witness. But then a thought came to me, who is God? And I ran outside under the stars and I fell on my face and I cried out to a holy God, who are you? Who are you, God? You have to exist because I know evil exists. And I cried out to him. I don't know how long I was out there crying out to God, but I did. And he was faithful. And in that moment, I believe a scripture was fulfilled in me. Awake, O you sleeper, and rise from the dead, and let Christ's light shine on you. From that moment, God took my fear away. He removed it from me, removed it completely, and gave me the peace of Christ that transcends all understanding. And then from that moment on, 15 years ago, I asked for untainted truth. He set me on a journey of reading the Bible through every year, studying scripture voraciously so that I could expose Watchtower's lies to the people that I love. 
my fellow Jehovah's Witness friends and family because you don't have to be afraid anymore. You don't have to be confused because there's hope and there's truth and there's love and there's saving grace in Jesus Christ. So, well, thankfully that's all I have to you because I'm a little cho choked up. So friends, open up your hearts to truth. Let go of the watchtower lies today. Cry out to Jesus as your savior because he'll save you.